Hello guys, welcome to the new episode of Tech Career 2.0. All right, so the guest today we have is though from a management role, but he is a passionate trainer. He has run PMP workshop. He probably has the most number of certification in industry, including six AWS certification, certification for PMP, PMI, and, and PGMB and ITIL. So let me introduce to you Tarun. Tarun, welcome to our show. Please introduce yourself and let our viewers know uh, about your journey. Thank you, Mohit uh, Anand. Yeah, it, it, it's been, uh, you know, uh, a, a very uh, great privilege for me to be uh, on your podcast. Uh, I started my career in 2001. So in 2001, uh, uh, you know, the prime aim of any engineer was like uh, to get a, you know, 10,000 salary and a good <laughs> nine to five job. So that was the, uh, the first thing we were looking for. Uh, by the time I graduated 2001, I was having, you know, three, four opportunities, uh, all from, you know, off campus and your PSU uh, jobs. So uh, I selected one of the PSU jobs, which was a state PSU. Uh, that was a very uh, well-known organization called Punjab Communications Limited. It was famous by the name PCL in Chandigarh. Uh, so started my research journey from there. First job was in research and development. And it was, I was leading, uh, you know, uh, uh, the KU band development, KU band mm -hmm. radio uh, trans receiver design. I was, uh, by the time uh, I was in this uh, PANCOM, I was again attempting several, you know, again, PSU exams. So in 2003, I cracked the All India exam BSNL, uh, Bharat Sanjar Nikam Limited. And uh, I don't know, uh, it was a, you know, bigger organization or what prompted me, but uh, as the exam cleared, I didn't think I joined BSNL. So it was from three to seven, 2003 to seven, I remained with BSNL and uh, I played multiple roles there. I mean, uh, from technology front, when you are in government sector, na, there is no barring. I mean, there is no, if you are enthusiast, there is no, you know, uh, road stop or there, there will be never, uh, never any, you know, hindrance in terms of what you want to learn because it's up to you only. Uh, in, in private sector, you are confined to some, you know, territory and you you cannot go to any uh, other territory in, in anyone uh, else then. So as I learned about, you know, you know, transmission technologies, switching technologies, mobile technologies. So everything was wide open there. So in 2007, I was working uh, on Ericsson switch. That was a new, you know, a switch or new mobile exchange deployment uh, in BSNL. Uh, uh, so I was uh, seeing that Ericsson engineers are coming uh, to the, you know, uh, for the implementation and the installation. So I got fascinated, you know, uh, that was uh, two government organizations. So I got fascinated by the MNC culture and all. And I left BSNL, you will not imagine. I was not knowing how to leave a government organization. I left BSNL on one day notice. So one day, you know, see a government organization, a person uh, working in an organization for six years. And I had a bond also. So uh, five years bond, four years they had gone. I, I could have uh, very easily spent one more year. And, you know, uh, got rid of all those you know uh, bond monies and all and even I would, have, I would have taken a lot of money also with me my gratuities and all but i don't know what happened to me uh i i i, I was a, a kind of you know in government culture sometimes person uh, get frustrated also i mean by the you know slow pace of the project implementations and all so i went to my uh, you know uh, senior and i said that uh, this is my designation so uh, I gave my paper and then he said, I will forward to uh, my senior management and to my, uh, you know, uh, senior. And I said that uh, this is my designation. So uh, I gave my paper and then he said, I will forward to uh, my senior management and it would, uh, some approval would come in six to nine months. So I said <laughs> six to nine. Over there is uh, I gave my paper and then he said, I will forward to uh, my senior management and it would, uh, some approval would come in six to nine months. So I said <laughs> six to nine. <laughs> and over there is calling me next day to join. <laughs> so uh, I again called them up. So uh, he said, yeah, you just, uh, I mean, get your, you know, resignation uh, uh, received to your, uh, I mean, uh, colleague and you join it. We don't require anything else. So uh, you can join the organization. So I joined Ericsson, you know, uh, uh, that time. So, so I joined Ericsson, I mean, the level which was offered to me. So I joined straight away without any negotiation, without anything. So I was not knowing about MNC culture that you have to negotiate also for the pay packages. Yeah. So I joined and th that day, I mean, the journey started 
as a you know new territory new regime in the uh, you know private sector i worked for 10 hours 12 hours i was about to you know go home and at that day there was no 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 network operation center no you know uh, security operation center everything was managed from you know that particular place only you you have full rights to play with the systems or the mobile system or the, i mean everything was being you know fault management alarm management configuration management everything was handled uh, from there only and uh, you know you are the only uh, one or two people uh, over there in that uh, territory you who have to manage them. so that was like working 15 16 hours a day then i realized how this you know private ter telecom territory is all about you know, and uh, and you you will not imagine even uh, even if we worked you know four hours continuous in government setup we were like that yeah, we have now worked for whole 10 days 15 days it was the kind of you know feeling that uh, we got in government setup uh, then uh, i mean uh, i got an opportunity uh, uh, at uh, i got a call from infosys uh, it was around you know same period 2009 10 when it was a global meltdown i was having some you know media gateway failure msc failure so i, I denied see i am i'm currently on my job i have a, you know outtakes so i cannot come then it was the fourth opportunity uh, fourth time when I uh, got a call from, you know, Infosys, I straight away went. I mean, uh, uh, so at the same day, then uh, there was a HR, HR call. So I was th I was seeing that uh, it was my second uh, second interview and uh, first face-to-face -face interview with HR. So I was seeing that whenever I, I'm speaking something, she's taking down uh, notes. I mean, uh, there is no eye contact. There is no this and this. So I was thinking, but she's writing here. I mean, I have not... Uh, such kind of interviews and all so uh, it, it happened uh and then i was uh i mean kind of you know uh, going out of the that uh, particular building i was again called by the you know the head there who was so he told me uh, where are you going so my uh, my my work my work is done and you know hr will hr is saying that they will inform me after seven days so uh he said no you stay uh he again called that lady offer him right now so okay i Upper, uh, I mean, whatever I had written, I got, you know, 30, 40 percent beyond that. I mean, it was almost, you know, 120 percent hike, 100, 120 oh. percent hike. Uh, so I thought that uh, whatever, you know, uh, Infosys considered my initial experience and, you know, technical expertise, which I had not considered at that time. Mm. So I you know, good role also. Uh, so uh, I was given a project, US project level two, uh, level three uh, operator was there. So uh, at that time, uh, Infosys had, you know, complete kind of NOC setup, complete NOC setup was there for uh, British, British Telecom and uh, this level three US. I think you were also in the, yeah, I think, I think you were probably would be in SDB five building that uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. SDB five. Yeah. SDB. Yeah. I yeah, was actually, I, I used to work in British Telecom pro <laughs> project. So okay. it was, I think SDB three. And then I think we probably were during the same time in the same campus, but there were 10,000 other people, right? In the same campus. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. IT, yeah, it's, it's a big, big IT, right? So, yeah. So, 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 you know, from, from a sm very small organizations to that organization, uh, when I used to, you know, go with a uh, bus, so many people. So I always felt that I'm now again, taken admission to some university and no <laughs> in this country. It was yes, a, going going with the crowd, right? So I mean, uh, you yes. have to somewhere distinct yourself from the crowd, right? And uh, how did you do that? I mean, if uh, you are going with the flow and you know you are uh, going with the same career that, that thousands of people are doing, then you are not distincting yourself, right? So I mean, what yes. was that that point or when you you know went to Infosys and where really you start distincting yourself? From the yes, yeah, so I I think it, it it was the Infosys time because see uh, I was not knowing about certifications at all. Even you know in telecom, nobody uh, at that time uh, was having any passion for certifications. So uh, uh, even uh, uh, in 2009 10 when I went to Infosys, uh, there was there was a you know strict routine or you can say a formulation that you have to go for at least one process certification and two technical certifications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, that was a ruling uh, over there. So uh, again, you would get your appraisals and time and all. So uh, I was thinking, yeah, see, I had no idea about IT industry. So my seven, uh, you know, for, from 2001 to nine, it was all about telecom. So in telecom, you know, when a person is working for 18 hours a day, how can a person, I mean, what would be the normal behavior if he's put at a bench? I mean, even, uh, you know, for learning some technologies or maybe grooming himself. So at in the first month, I did all the trainings. I mean, 
from there i saw people doing certifications like pmp i heard pmp first time uh, at infosys and itil also so those two uh, were the process related certifications people used mm -hmm. to talk about uh, so that was the first time i learned about certification so meanwhile I, i got a call from nokia so i was very happy i'm going back to my telecom <laughs> territory so i joined uh, you know at nokia pune uh, so then uh, uh, yeah in 2000 uh, uh, you know uh, uh, 10 onwards i joined uh, reliance communications so reliance uh, i again uh, came back to punjab from you know pune i got an opportunity uh, so uh, my mother was actually uh, all alone at uh, punjab by, so uh, when i went to pune because she was so there i continued so uh, there in 2012 i started my first certification so uh, i had got time uh, so 2012 i attempted pmp and then carried on in the same role uh, so uh, reliance communications was a topsy turvy uh, you know uh, kind of uh, experience so in uh, you know arcom was again uh, entire managed services were transitioned transition to ericsson in 2013 so we were not again i uh, transitioned to ericsson so that was my second stint in ericsson from 2013 to 17 mm -hmm. uh, and that was the time when you know this 3g and 4g uh, 3g was you know 3g had not gained traction at the same time 4g came and uh, by the time 4g came Uh, due to the you know uh, the spectrum policies and all all the operators nearly became bankrupt Sorry. so that time your telecom was again from you know uh, the downward curve so uh, so that was the time i utilized maximum uh, for my learning so uh, 2012 uh, i did my you know agile certification also uh, mm -hmm. in a, during time agile certification was uh, pmi acp i did pgmp also so i was you know 76th program manager from india so uh, there were uh, not you know uh, pgmp qualified candidate uh, then uh, from uh, yeah, then i also attempted some you know in 2017 around uh, was the time uh, i attempted some technical certifications so uh, aws and all so cloud i was seeing that what i can do in cloud so uh, uh, aws was the easiest way because some you know material was there at least uh, videos yeah. or and uh, i had done a leadership course also uh, in uh, from iim calcutta in 2015 16 so i had some you know good relationships build uh, there also so from there uh, i knew someone that uh, who was in you know uh, uh starlight technologies so he uh, she approached me that uh, we are having some opportunity so you can apply over there so the opportunity was about a very big you know multi thousand crore defense project so that was the opportunity and the person who was going to interview was a you know obviously a defense commander only because uh, you know uh, starlight had uh, uh, those all those you know uh, leaders in place for executing those defense projects so it was entirely different kind of interview so <laughs> so i i was thinking that he will ask this and that so i i when i went he said take this you know that was you know a whole uh, kind of uh, the rfp document so that rfp document was given to me uh, i will come 30 minutes after read this document for 30 minutes and let me know what would be your execution strategy for this project so that was the kind of interview so you had only that. one round and that was to uh, our side yeah that was to, that was there that whatever you can uh, i mean Perfect. think of in that even, even if you have known about this right that this is a interview it strategy it you cannot happen. prepare anything for this kind of interview right like this is this so, is testing this is, this, this is real interview where they're going to test you yeah, as a person point. not as a person who's <laughs> who's prepared for something else like preparing they they are, yeah. they are going to test exactly who you yeah, are so, so, so you know defense people have their own ways of you know uh, evaluating people so i learned uh, their uh, you know I, i had attended ssb so i had a similar kind of you know now i am yeah. <laughs> put into a new territory I, think, i have to find yeah that would have been dream come true right that <laughs> have you already gone through the ssb process and you already like imagine yourself in that in that role and contributing something towards the country's security and the defense right and now here is the opportunity again after probably a decade that again the you yeah, have been yeah. like that these are my 30 minutes where i can again <laughs> yes, prove yes. myself See, I, yeah i was actually passionate about defense opportunity even you know uh, when the first phone came uh, from uh, hr now uh, then uh, when they said that it is a defense opportunity and uh, we are working you know on a nation building project 
so i was you know i was uh, so much excited that immediately uh, i would have agreed to join at the you know same package also because it was about learning new and uh, not about you know gaining uh, monetary but at least gaining something intellectual you know uh, out of it out of that opportunity so uh, yeah so uh, that 30 minutes i noted my points and also Uh, because see, I was you know I was in R and D, so I had you know uh, kind of you know detailed uh, minute detailed and exercises. So yeah, so when uh, the interview began, so I I nailed out some points and some challenges uh, that could be there in the project. So sir was like that, yes. मतलब he was like that in such a short time uh, in twenty twenty five minutes. How you have you know taken such insights out of this document? Mm -hmm. So. He, he said, "Okay, uh, I'm I'm done." So, uh, and that project was in APO still uh, at that point of time. So he said, "HR will contact you." And uh, uh, he he didn't ask me anything. Uh, only then regarding the stability part of the things of what is your family and all. How will you join? How will you manage? And so th that uh, again happened. And then I joined Star Life. I mean, in two thousand seventeen. Uh, so I continued my journey of certifications. From there also, because that was the APO stage. So APO to PO, there was a lot of time uh, in the project to come. So I then did my five or six certifications. So I used that time, you know, uh, that uh, APO to PO time. So by the time PO came, I was ready with you know five six certifications, uh, AWS certifications. But then uh, those certifications actually, uh, you know, uh, taught me a lot of things uh, in the IT sector. How you have to use the terminology. I mean, because see, in this project, I had to deal with a lot of vendors. Perfectly, it, it would be a greenfield project, right? And when you build something from scratch, you have a use the terminology. I mean, because see, in this project, I had to deal with a lot of vendors. Perfectly, it, it would be a greenfield project, right? And when you build something from scratch, you have a deeper knowledge, you have a deeper yes. insight, and you can also you know prepare it as you want, based on obviously so, the design, right? Yeah. So, Mohit, you will you will not I mean imagine even uh, that project was from scratch. You have you had to build buildings also. So we, I, I was, I was, I was part of the initial team. Uh, I mean, who built the entire one fifty member team for the execution of this project uh, with the project director, two, three of us. I mean, we selected the whole team, and uh, you know, for the very uh, first few months, I was also you know uh, learning civil engineering uh, uh, tech. How to you know construct the data center? What kind of quality check sheets would be there? By the time we had evaluated vendors, I was interviewing people from civil engineering also. You know. Yeah. Yes. So uh, just a question, Tarun. Uh, you know, you uh, took up uh, for, uh, you know for your career journey. One of the uh, you know biggest point in that thirty minute of your interview, right? I think uh, what stood out was your preparation throughout your career, right? What you did, yeah. the learning, the experience that you had. What is the one takeaway that you would provide uh, to our listeners and viewers that, uh, you know, uh, how should we prepare ourselves for that situation where you are, you know, you are given a challenge which you are never prepared for, right? So, what insight would you like to share? See, uh, I would say change is the only constant because see, uh, and uh, your hunger to learn, uh, that is one thing that uh, stands you apart. And uh, whenever you learn something, don't uh, ever look out for you know immediate outcomes. So uh, I mean, uh, uh, right now, uh, wise, if you say uh, if you'll ask people to do AWS certifications or maybe any certification, now the first uh, you know response you would come from the respondents is that uh, how will it will help me in uh, two months, three months, or four months, yeah. or would my package increase after that. So that yeah. would be the Yet, you know, uh, but uh, you should see uh, that knowledge. See, that would be a byproduct only. I mean, what you receive, but the actual outcome is the previous version of you and the refined version of you. So between those two versions of yourself, you should compare that. What is the you know what you have gained as in intellectually or maybe you as as part of your execution skills. But you should not look, uh, you know, from it uh, from a monetary uh, perspective directly. So that is, you know, uh, one insight that uh, I can give. Uh, and 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 you know, by the time I was uh, attempting those AWS certifications, I also faced because my base education, my base degree was electronics and communications. So you had, uh, you know, gone through those preparation for certification. How do you uh, make some time for that? 
You okay. can name your you are also performing <laughs> your yeah. the, on job duties. You are also taking care of your families. I mean, is there a, a, a kind of a magic trick or something that, or some tips or tricks that you would like to share? What is the best way to prepare in a shorter time? You know, for these certifications. And also, yeah, yes. My interview is always smiling, so I don't think he's <laughs> depressed or something. Like I, we see now, yeah. right? Like work life balance and. There's nine to five where nine to five is being used as a derogatory. Yeah. I keep repeating yeah. that I don't like I don't feel right when people use nine to five as a derogatory word. Like it's 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 that time when you get uh, your like your livelihood, right? So why yeah. to why to use it derogatory? So and uh, looking at him like done all this like all these projects, all these big programs and all the certifications, all the degree, all I see with them, all the passion. He's proud of it, but he has delivered. He's proud of what he has achieved. I'm sure his family is also proud of it. And his and the smile which he carries is like is a byproduct of what he's getting the love from the family which he's brought. So, and, and, and just an uh, addition to it, he is also pursuing PhD. Oh, okay. right now. <laughs> so, how do you get time? You know, and what what is the best way? I mean, viewers and listeners would be you know also uh, have this question, right? So. How to manage your time so that you can continuously learn as well as apply it in your day-to-day -day job? Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, uh, slow and steady wins the race in this regard. So uh, I don't do, you know, anything different. But uh, if you devote one hour daily, but you have to be consistent. Even, uh, you know, my PhD guide also says uh, the same thing to me because, uh, you know, uh, currently he's also working on me to work consistently. So if you put 0.1% each day, so he was saying that 1.01, if you raise to power 365, it is 37. So by the time, I mean, if you put one hour or 0.1% every day, when it you, you will see the compounding over a, a period of 365 days, you would be 37 times better. So, uh, I mean, is the mantra actually consistency is important even if you read 15 minutes 20 minutes each day that you know uh, that consistency is not to be broken uh, what we will do even uh, when i prepared for pmp so what what happens is that we uh, one fine day one weekend we study one chapter two chapters then we leave it for two three days four days then again we go back again recapitulate but uh, so in that process a lot of you know time is wasted but if you are consistent over a period of time now and don't wait for perfection. Don't wait for perfection. That is my biggest learning. Uh, so first certification I attempted, you know, after six to eight months of, you know, learning that was PMP because it was my first certification. Then whenever I have, you know, tried for a new certification, I don't wait for six to eight months. I mean, two to three months are enough. It is only our fear in our mind to fail that we don't attempt the test. And uh, mind it, if you are prepared to, for two, three months on a certification and you go seriously for an exam, I think there are only five to 10% chances of failing. You will nail it. Yeah. So Tarun, uh, like you have a vast experience in the people management as well, right? And yeah. what we are seeing in the industry, like the classical people managers, right? And now what we have people managers, the need in the industry as a people manager has changed. Like the industry want people manager to be technical throughout. They want them to be updated with the technology. Even they were, they have to attend those technical meetings. Which earlier they used probably people manager used to just delegate to the team leads, right? And now we are seeing there's a shift. People managers are expected to keep themselves upgraded with the technology. So what's your take on that? Do you believe that people and manager should keep themselves at pass at pace with the technology? Or do you think that people manager is a niche field area where people managers should have a skill of how uh, understanding the employee psyche and how to manage them, how to make how to promote make them resourceful and so that they can be more productive. So, what's your take on that? Uh, so yeah, uh, very good. And so uh, see, people managers previously, you know, uh, uh, if I talk about Infosys also, yeah. I mean, you know. We had uh, two different roles. One was a consultant, and one was one was project manager. And project manager manager typically was only handling you know uh, incident management, escalations, and uh, you know duty rosters. Time so, sheet or uh, something. <laughs> yeah, time sheet. Yes, that daily activity reporting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, 
so uh, but now you know uh, uh, i will give you example even uh, my uh, seniors also uh, uh, the vps svps and also they are so passionate about learning technology and uh, the down uh, people also i mean your subordinates also look uh, you from a different perspective when they know that you are you know technically qualified uh, you know you are technically proven so uh, their outlook is also i mean uh, a bit different and nowadays uh, uh, even uh, those you know people managers who are uh, in very senior roles are asking uh, that what kind of certification should i attempt what kind of you know this certification would be good for me or uh, not so even people in our organization uh, in late 50s also are you know pushing towards this uh, cissp or uh, you know aw uh, solutions architect or so so now the industry is changing i mean learning no age no bar no even <clears throat> someone from you know hr also uh, coming to me that tarun uh, we have seen your this uh, project management videos so we are very passionate about it we want to do every everyone in hr needs to be a project manager yeah one one important thing which like certification gives like everyone talking in the about it we want to do every everyone in hr needs to be a project manager yeah one one important thing which like certification gives like everyone talking in the same language in the organization like the same yes. jargon they're using their and which really helps like across the organization they might not have to do log into the device they don't need to code or they don't need but at least they would be speaking the same same language right so they can understand the problem they can understand the uh, like then only they can if they don't can't understand the problem right how okay how will they provide the solution which was i was seeing the gap right like project managers or people managers or the delivery managers they were just like at the end they were only providing the moral support it's there was yes, a time yes, in the yes. industry just providing the moral support for the pro problems now what we are seeing is they are into the technical certification like cisp uh, pm pmp and even like aws like i think aws is, has changed aws certification has changed the landscape altogether so now even all these roles right um, are able to speak in the same language the same jargon yeah now and uh, now actually it is a mandatory thing also it, it has become regulatory so because see uh, what all uh, government rfps are coming now they are laying down the conditions very strictly because if you have to be a project director or you know uh, in, in in projects like you know psus or government projects so you have to be a pmp mandatory you cannot uh, be a or a project manager uh, if you are not pmp so this has now started coming from government also um, so thanks uh, Tarun, for sharing your insights uh, uh, if you are not pmp so this has now started coming from government also um, so thanks uh, Tarun, for sharing your insights uh, it was, was so insightful and i mean your journey is awesome you know from government yeah. to psu to private sector and then to now handling now to handling a project in for defense and that to you know a, a green field which which laps is you know to across a lot of fields in engineering so thanks for sharing your insights thanks for sharing your journey all right guys uh this was tarun who has shared his journey from uh, his transformation and uh, i hope that you learned a lot from this interview so please subscribe to us please share your thoughts in your comment box as well yeah. all right thanks for thank you. you thank you so much guys thank you